What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Shadowlands video. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing really well. We are doing another Shadowlands 9.2 prep video. And I'm super excited. We are moving forward into Ellie Shaman. So we're done with the Enhancement Shaman builds so far. I don't think there's going to be any other builds that are kind of relevant. Um... Moving into 9.2 for Enhancement Shaman. So we're going to move forward into Ellie Shaman territory. And when I'm done doing the Ellie Shaman videos, we will in fact do a tier list on all the builds. I'll put them all together and we'll slap it on one of those cool looking tier list things. And I will show you guys because a, a bunch of you guys have been asking for that. And I just want to make a disclaimer about the tier list. It's not going to be like a which one's the best build tier list because I just despise those kinds of lists. Instead, it's going to be one that focuses on... Um, what builds are good for AOE? You know, what's good for cleave fights? We're going to sort of like have a little bit of a, a tier list on like what's strong for single target. You know, all Because I do think that a lot of these builds have relevance. I don't think any of them is really bad. I don't think they're all as much, except for maybe, except for maybe deeply rooted elements um, on Enhancement Shaman. But besides that, like Skybreakers is good for Enhance. Doomwinds is fine. Witch Doctors is good for single target. Primal Lava Axe can have a single target focus. It can also have an AoE focus. Legacy is 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 okay. It's maybe on the lower end of the power scale there. But again, maybe really, really good for single target. Um, you could run it with weird talents like Earth and Spike. Stuff like that. So we'll do a tier list. We're going to talk about all the builds. We'll mash them together. And I'm going to make a list of what I think is like strong in, in, in whatever situation you're you're looking at. Okay? So... Stay tuned for that, but we're going to get through the Elemental Shaman builds first, and let's talk about those. We're going to start with Skybreakers today, okay? Get your coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk about Skybreakers for Elemental Shaman. We obviously talked about Skybreakers for Enhancement Shaman, and that has a very particular bonus, which is that your, your Flame Shocks get 50% more crit. So let me just get my notes up really quick here. And I'll get into it. Let me uh, tell you sort of the outline of the video. Of course, we're going to talk about what Skybreakers does for Elemental Shaman in particular. We're going to talk about your stat priorities, talents, tier set bonus, covenant choice. The talents and covenant choice will be a big, big two sections there. Then we'll have some gameplay. And then I'm going to tell you where to craft Skybreakers, which I already told you in the last video. But if this is just your first time tuning in, we will tell you where to craft Skybreakers. So let's start with what does it do? So we looked in the Enhancement Shaman video, and we can see that Skybreakers, of course, makes your Flame Shock damage over time critical strikes reduce the cooldown of Storm Ellie or Fire Ellie, whichever one you have out. And your Flame Shock just gets a flat 50% crit chance. So that's really good. <clears throat> really, really good. We saw on Enhancement Shaman, the ability to spread Flame Shocks with Lava Lash now meant that you... We're getting lots and lots of free crits on your flame shocks and lots of easy flame shock spreading, which is really great. Elemental Shaman does not get to spread flame shock that easily. We don't have a button that just spreads it automatically. There is the Venthyr Covenant that will do that for us, but we'll get to that in a minute. So just understand that right now, um, Skybreakers is, generally speaking, only going to be good... I would say with Venthyr, like it's it's just very strong with Venthyr, but that's the baseline of what it does. It gives our Flame Shocks 50% crit, and it reduces our Ellie, and that has implications for Storm Ellie, for a Storm Ellie build, and we're going to see that in a minute. There's uh, This is Hero popping off on his uh, Ellie Shaman right now. He's doing a Earthquake build with Earth Ellie. We're kind of experimenting here in the lab, so he's doing a an Earth Earth Elemental Earthquake build. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute, but let's go to stat priorities really quick. Let's talk about what are your general stat priorities for Elemental Shaman. Of course, you need a bunch of haste, just like Enhance. I think 35-36% is fine, um, but haste is really, really good on Elemental Shaman. And then Mastery is also really good. It doesn't ever really get bad. Crit is also obviously very strong for... Any class, except that for Elemental Shaman, your Lava Bursts always crit, right? This is an interesting point to make here. Lava Burst says 
that it will always critically strike if the target has a flame shock on them. Interesting, right? So really important to understand that you don't need to build as much crit necessarily. And in particular, if you're running Skybreakers, then you're getting 50% crit on your flame shocks already, right? 50% crit on your flame shocks. And then you're going to get more crit on your lava burst. So those are both automatically critting for the purposes of this test. They're automatically critting, right? So we don't really need to invest in crit. Instead, we can invest in mastery. And mastery says, of course, your lightning bolt, lava burst, chain lightning have a 34% chance to trigger a second cast dealing almost the same, almost the normal amount of damage, 85% of the normal damage, right? So that's, that's amazing. And the more mastery you get, the higher this chance gets. So, like, there is probably some sort of a soft cap on mastery in the sense that once you get to, like, 50% mastery or 60%, that's probably good enough because um, it's just eventually it's, like, a bit of overkill, right? But it's still good. As much mastery as you can probably get is is good is going to be good. So I would say mastery is a really good stat for Ellie Shaman, because it's just going to give you a chance to double up on your cast, and that's a huge part of our damage, is whatever overloads, right? Look at um, Hero's overload right now. You can see Chain Lightning overload is doing 12% of his damage. That's just from his mastery. That's that's all it is, right? So very, very strong to have um, a good amount of mastery. Now, that's your stats. Basically haste mastery because we're getting free crit in a lot of different ways. Moving forward, let's look at talents really quickly that you're going to want to set up for a Skybreakers build. Remember, this is focused on um, on uh, Flame Shock uh, doing damage. I'm going to show the Night Fae version of this really quickly, and then we're going to skip over to the Venthyr version, which I think is the best. But when we get to the Covenants, we'll talk about that. First, let's talk about what you're going to run for your talents. Of course, <clears throat> if you are running... AoE, if you're doing an AoE like Mythic Plus, you probably want to go Earth and Rage if you're doing Storm Ellie. That would be my suggestion. <coughs> Excuse me. Because you're not going to be pressing Lava Burst as much. You're just not. You're going to be pressing Chain Lightning a lot. That's what You're going to be pressing almost exclusively. And then when you get free Lava Surge procs on your Lava Burst, that's when you're going to press Lava Burst. But generally speaking, this is good. If you're doing a Storm Ellie setup, this is what you want to do. Primal Elemental... Stormkeeper, Storm Ellie, and Earth and Rage. I think Aftershock is just an always... I'm just always taking this. Like, Elemental Blast is okay, but generally speaking, Aftershock gets so much freaking value. The number of times that Earthquake is able to be cast just back to back to back, you're going to see that when we get to the demonstration. So, um, I think this is the setup you want. I think if you're going single target, there's something to be said for Echo the Elements. Because it just does so much damage and it synergizes so well with the tier set bonus. And we'll get to that in a minute. But for now, I would say AoE, you want this setup here. If you're doing Storm Ellie. Single target, you want Echo if you're doing Storm Ellie. If you're doing Fire Elemental, let me just say really quickly that Storm Elemental, of course, provides passive bonus damage. The guy does do bonus damage all on his own. You can see Hero right now. Oh, let's go to the current one current segment heroes elemental look at the eye of the storm damage that's eight almost nine percent and then the wind gust so he's providing a lot of passive damage all on his own right <laughs> yeah flocked i'll talk to you in a minute um so hero you can see the storm elemental does lots of passive damage storm elemental also obviously gives you that buff right that buffs your chain lightning and your lightning bolt and makes them cast a lot quicker so the storm elemental has a 50 50 split between what it does it's got passive damage and an active component which we'll talk about later because it's kind of significant fire elemental is all passive damage if you flip over to here and you get your fire ellie it's all flame shock passive damage which is very very interesting because we're running skybreakers and skybreakers is all about uh, flame shock flame shock does 50 percent has 50 percent more crit with skybreakers and then if you have fire ellie uh your flame shocks now deal damage 25 percent quicker and uh, last twice as long so that's a really interesting thing to understand about the, the difference between them and i'll explain more of that in a minute but if you're going to run fire elemental i would recommend you can either go master the elements or liquid magma liquid magma is actually perfectly fine i ran this in a few um i ran this a little while ago why isn't this why is this going away 
switch. Where's my liquid magma? Let me find it. Uh, that's that's uh, enhance. There it is. Liquid magma is doing five percent of my damage there. So, um, I want to make a little quick little like math problem here for you guys. So think about this. If you take master the elements, you can weave in a lava burst before you press earthquake every single time, right? Earthquake right now does five thousand damage. 20% of 5,000 is 1,000. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So if we take Master of the Elements and we do a Lava Burst before every single Earthquake, which you're not always going to be able to do, but let's pretend like you're amazing and you can do that, you're getting 1,000 more damage per Earthquake that you cast. I cast Earthquake 43 times. That means I'm going to get 43,000 more damage. Everybody following? 1,000 more damage from Master of the Elements per Earthquake I cast Earthquake 43 times. That means I would get 43,000 more damage on average. Liquid Magma Totem did 300,000 damage. So 40,000 extra damage, 43,000 extra damage, or 300,000 damage. Now, we're not, I'm not accounting for crits and all that stuff. I understand that. But you need to understand the math here. People think Liquid Magma Totem is just bad. But, like, it's actually fine. It's also uncapped AoE. Just so you know, it doesn't really matter, but it's a one minute cooldown and it's uncapped AoE and it does enough damage on its own that you can either take Master of the Elements or Liquid Magma Totem if you're going to run Fire Elemental with Skybreakers. I know I'm adding up a whole bunch of different things here and maybe it's kind of confusing, but I just want to make sure you guys understand there are two different builds you can run with Skybreakers. You can go Storm Elemental with Earth and Rage. That's kind of that build. Or if you're single target, you can go Echo the Elements. Or... If you're going to go Fire Elemental, you could go Liquid Magma Totem or Master, which either one you want. And then um, I would take Echo the Elements because you're going to want to be casting Lava Burst a little bit more. But you could also take Earth and Rage in AoE. Once again, it's up to you guys. There are options here. I just wanted I just wanted to really highlight that Liquid Magma Totem is good. It actually does enough damage all on its own. Okay. Okay. That's that. <clears throat> Talents. Those are the two most important rows. Right here, Storm Elemelli. Elemelli? Storm Elemelli. <laughs> Storm Elemelli versus Fire Elemelli. You just pick whichever one you want, and I'm going to show both both builds today. This is the most important row here, for sure. I think most of the other rows are kind of locked in, except for this top one. You can mess around with that as well. Now, moving forward to the tier set bonus, why does any of this matter? Well... Here's the tier set bonus, and if you've never seen the elemental tier set bonus before, I'm going to read it for you right now. When your fire elemental or storm elemental is active, lava burst deals 20% more damage, and you get lava surge every 8 seconds. Very cool. Very good for single, single target right there. That's why you might want to take echo the elements in single target, because this tier set bonus, it really is all about lava burst. Casting lava burst extends the duration of your fire elemental or storm elemental by 1.5 seconds. If your elemental is not active, lava burst has a chance to reduce its cooldown by 10 seconds. Okay. This is really significant. So this is where Skybreakers has the opportunity. You have a chance with Skybreakers to get a permanent Storm Elemental. Yes, you heard me right. A permanent Storm Elemental. Now, I don't think this is actually very feasible as Night Fae, but it is possible. You can do it. It's just not really, like, good. With um, Venthyr, it's very possible. Let me let me show you that in a demonstration in a second. But what I think you're going to want to do with the tier set bonus, that's how that works. It's all about Lava Burst. And your Lava Burst will extend your Ellie now. And, of course, you're going to get Lava Surge every 8 seconds. So that's really kind of just single target bonus. The two pieces is single target bonus. The four piece really opens up this build and says, okay, maybe now we can get permanent Storm Ellie. You're actually you're gonna get permanent fire Ellie no matter what. Don't worry about him. He will be permanent because the flame shocks for fire elemental last longer than storm elemental, and so they all keep ticking, and um they reduce the cooldown of fire Ellie much much faster just from skybreakers. So with the fire elemental build, skybreakers will do all the work for you. It'll reduce the cooldown of the Ellie all by itself. With storm elemental. Your flame shocks don't last that long. They last the normal amount of time, which means that you don't get an instant uh, refresh all the way down on your storm elemental. You have to work at it a little bit. You got to try a bit harder. Okay, so it's important to understand the difference there. That's the tier set bonus in a nutshell. 
Okay, let's move on to covenants really quick. I want to talk about covenants. And we're going to talk about, um, I'm going to give you like the the two that probably don't matter at all. And then, and then we're going to move into the two that do matter. I think there's two choices here. So the first one, Kyrian, is just kind of, it's just kind of bad. Especially if you're running Storm Elemental, the Kyrian one is very bad. Because you have to get all these charges out on Vesper Totem. You do your three damaging abilities to proc Vesper Totem once, this legendary effect. And then you have to do three healing spells to proc Vesper Totem a second time. This legendary effect a second time. Which means you have to probably take Earth Shield and you have to spam Earth Shield three times like I was showing in my Enhance video. So that's not ideal in your Storm Elemental window because you want to be pressing Chain Lightning. In your like you don't ever want to press anything other than Chain Lightning or Lightning Bolt in your Storm Elemental window, right? You just don't. So Kyrian is just off the table. Even for the Fire Elemental build, Kyrian is just not going to work. It's okay burst, but it's just not... You have to spam these other healing spells, and it just doesn't make sense. On Resto Shaman, it makes a lot of sense. For the DPS specs, it doesn't make any sense. Let's look at Necrolord. Is Necrolord going to be good? Because you get the haste buff from Splintered Elements. And the, the, the bottom line here is that it's not super great. And the main reason is because you don't have any way of spreading uh, Flame Shock if you're Necrolord. You, you can do one Flame Shock and then one Primordial Wave, which will put a Flame Shock out, and then maybe one more Flame Shock, and then you're going to press your Lava Burst, and you're going to get 30% more haste. That is like the ideal best-case scenario that you're going to really get on average on a pack. If you think realistically speaking in Mythic Plus, that's all you're going to get, okay? Now, that's just not really good enough. Enhancement Shaman can spread Flame Shocks for free with Lava Lash. We don't get to do that as Ellie. So this loses a tremendous amount of value in Mythic Plus on Ellie Shaman because you can't spread Flame Shocks. That's just the bottom line, guys. So I'm very sad to say that this is just not as good on Ellie. It's very good on Enhanced, though. So these two are kind of, they're kind of meh. Let's move into Venthyr. Venthyr is, I think, probably the premier way to build this, this, um, this spec. Uh, Elemental Shaman, sorry, moving into 9.2. Let me just take one little quick. We're going to talk about Seeds of Rampant Growth. So, Fate Transfusion, Seeds of Rampant Growth is good. It reduces the cooldown of your Ellie, which is actually really strong. And then also gives you 24% 20, crit, which is very strong. Because you're going to have that up during your big burst window with your Storm Elemental. So, Night Fae is good. And you get Mastery, because you're going to run Naya. You can also run Karain for crit. But Naya is pretty good with Mastery, because then you get like... 500 mastery, right? Uh, 25 times 16. Uh, that's 250. Yeah, it's 300 mastery. No, it's like 400 mastery. Sorry. You get 400 mastery when you press Fate Transfusion. And that boosts all of your elemental overload procs like crazy. And of course, in your storm elemental window, you want to press Chain Lightning as much as possible. And Chain Lightning can overload. So that's the combo that you're looking for. So Night Fae is good. Except it doesn't really get you permanent Ellie in the same way that Venthyr does. Venthyr is so, so good for Elemental Shaman now simply because it spreads Flame Shocks for you. This is what the Lava Lash buff is doing for Enhancement Shaman, right? So, first of all, you're going to be... This build is all about Flame Shock, right? Because Skybreakers gives you 50% more Flame Shock crits. So imagine if you had five free Flame Shocks out. And you can add a sixth one on your own. You have six Flame Shocks with 50% crit. And if you run Fire Ellie, they all are dealing damage 25% quicker. And they last twice as long. So this is the ultimate combo, I think. Is that you're going to want to go Skybreakers plus Venthyr. And you get the free Flame Shock spreading all the Flame Shocks are critting. All the Flame Shocks last twice as long. All the Flame Shocks deal damage 25% quicker. That's the build that I'm looking at as my as my big... Like, if I was coming into 9.2 as an Ellie Shaman, that's the one I'd be looking at. But for the purposes of today, I'm going to show you guys the two different builds. So those are the Covenants in a nutshell. Carrion's bad. Necrolord is actually just bad. Night Fae is okay. Venthyr is, like, premium. I think Venthyr is amazing. Night Fae is still possible, but not as good, in my opinion. So I'm going to show you the gameplay right now. So if you run Night Fae, 
and you want to try and do Storm Ellie. Here's the AoE setup I think you should run. Here's the Covenant I think you should go. You must, must, must take Call of Flame. This is the mandatory conduit that you have to take. Otherwise, build this however you want. You could sneak over here and get the extra Naya's Burst if you want, but I'm just going to go right down the middle for now to get triple triple potencies. I think that a Fate Transfusion uh, is actually pretty important too, the Essential Extraction, but this is the main one. Call of Flame. You want your Ellie to last 50% longer, okay? So, <clears throat> how do you start this build off? Um, you're basically going to start with your Ellie into a Fate Transfusion because you want to get the cooldown rolling immediately. And then you want to pop your Elemental's big ability, and then you're going to go into like Chain Lightning spamming. Now, with the tier set bonus, this is really important to understand. The general rule of thumb for a Storm Elemental build is that you cast Chain Lightning back to back to back to back to back, and you only fill with the occasional Earthquake because you want to make sure you're spending your Maelstrom. This changes a bit with the tier set bonus because if you want to have a permanent Storm Alley, which you can have, you must respect the Lava Surge procs and you must press them. When you get a Lava Surge proc, you have to press Lava Burst. You have to. You have to, you have to, you have to. Otherwise, you will not get the cooldown of Storm Alley back in time to have them up permanently, and I'm going to show you that. Okay? Here's how this works. Let me take a drink first. We're going to start with Stormkeeper into Ellie into Fey Transfuse. Here we go. Stormkeeper into Ellie into Fey. And then we're going to go. He's juiced, so we're going to press his ability. Earthquake. Lots of earthquakes. Okay, we've got a Lava Surge proc from our Ellie, which is really great. Remember, we must respect Lava Surge procs that we get. There we go. We got another one. We're going to press it. Because Lava Sur uh, when we press Lava Burst... It will extend the duration of our elemental. There's another lava burst right there. Press it. Okay. Got a couple flame shocks out now just for just for good luck. There's a lava surge proc. There's another one. We're gonna keep pressing it. We are slowly working up our chain lightning uh, cast time buff. And we're filling in the gaps with the lava burst because we have to. Now our chain lightning is getting crazy. Right? Chain lightning is getting crazy. Look at our Storm Ellie cooldown. He's coming back. Respect the Lava Burst proc if we get one. There's one. Oh, we lost him. See how difficult it is to maintain permanent Ellie uptime? Um, around 20k. Um, I just need to... That's a really good highlight there. You guys can see that the Storm Ellie had about 20 seconds left. I didn't respect the procs enough. I actually maybe just needed to take Echo the Elements in order to actually make that work. It doesn't really work as Night Fae. Now, the damage was strong. Like, we were... That guy asked us what we were maintaining. It was about 20k, right? Look at the Storm Elemental damage. It's insane. He's doing 16% all on his own. 17, 18% almost. Chain Lightning Overload is, of course, insane because of our mastery, right? All the mastery is making us get the Elemental Overloads, plus, of course, Stormbringer. But I really just wanted to highlight that the Night Fae build is okay, but it doesn't give you a permanent Ellie. And that is what sucks about it, if you're trying to get a permanent Storm Ellie. So, um, let's switch over to Venthyr. I'm going to show you what I think the, the premier like build is going to be particularly for Mythic Plus, I think it's going to be Venthyr. And it's because it allows you to get a permanent Storm Elemental. And I think it's actually just better with Fire Elemental. We're going to show you a Fire Elemental build too. So, but <clears throat> you guys saw there, that was my Storm Elemental. He had about 20 seconds left. And then, boom, I lost the cooldown. And again, you guys can play this style. There is a style here, to be, to be sure, where it's like, you cast your Storm Ellie, and then you Fate Transfuse, and then you just blow up as much as you can. You cast Chain Lightning, and you ignore Lava Burst altogether, and you just do your big AoE rotation as much as you can and do big, big, big damage. And then your Storm Elemental is like, by the time you're done, he's like one minute away. Maybe he's 45 seconds away from coming off cooldown. That is something you can do. 
absolutely. And if you want to play that style where you just like get a huge haste buff on your on your chain lightning and then you drop it and then you have to restart from scratch again with a new storm elemental, perfectly fine. Pack to pack to pack, that might actually be really, really good damage. What I'm trying to showcase here, what I'm asking the question is, can we get permanent Ellie uptime? That's what I'm that's all I'm trying to answer here is that question, because that's that's the potential new build moving into 9.2, is this idea that you can get permanent Ellie uptime. So I believe it's possible with Vent here. Let's look at this really quickly, okay? Chain Harvest, Door of Shadows, even though I'm never going to use it. Let's still put it on my bar. What you're going to want to do is run Theotar because he gives you Mastery, of course, the Shade. And as an Elemental Shaman, you're not going to be moving as much as, as opposed to an Enhancement Shaman who moves all the time. It's not as good on Enhancement Shaman, right? But, uh, wait. <gasps> no, 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 no. My bad, guys. I got to go switch this really quick. We don't have the... I, I thought I put that in. I didn't put the uh, Call of Flame conduit in, but that's okay. We'll go fix it really quick go to uh, haven so yeah i just wanted to show the night fey version it's fine it gives you crit it reduces the cooldown of your ellie and that is cool and it basically means that like you have a every pack maybe every other pack you'll have storm elemental up and you can do big storm elemental things and that's wonderful but venthyr i believe will actually give you a permanent storm ellie and certainly it'll give you a permanent fire ellie and i do think that the best build moving forward into 9.2 is actually going to be the fire elemental build and i'm going to showcase that in a minute but first we have to fix our conduits because somebody forgot to put the right conduit in I'm not going to name any names it's me guys it's I, I i forgot it's me i'm the guy i'm the guy who forgot to do it one really amazing thing about um the new zone it, once you get there is that it has the pillar it has the Covenant uh, pillar thing for you here, which means you don't have to go all the way back to your Covenant homeland area to change stuff, right? So you might have to fly all the way to Revendreth to change your conduits and stuff. Not anymore. When you get to Haven in the new zone, they've got a Forge of Bonds right here, and you can just change stuff right here, which is amazing. Okay. We're going to run Theotar, and let me explain the since we have a second, we're running back. I have a second here. You're going to go Theotar for the Mastery. 550 Mastery is no joke. It means you're going to be proccing your Elemental Overload all the time. You need the Chain Harvest Crit. You need this Conduit. And you need these, um, obviously the Call to Flame, which makes our Elemental last like 50% longer. You absolutely need that. There is a third option here to, to go with either a Potency Conduit over here. A third Potency. Or you can go Wasteland Propriety, which I was talking about with people. And 6% versatility is kind of insane. It's really, really good. The reason it's really good is because it lasts for 14 seconds. And our Chain Harvest cooldown is going to be like 20 seconds on average. So the amount of uptime you will have on Wasteland Propriety is nuts. It's going to be really, really good. 6% versatility is just 6% more damage. That's all it is. And healing. And then 3% damage reduction. Do I have any versatility? Let's check it out. Yeah, right? I have 10% verse right now. Increases damage and healing by 10% and decreases damage taken by 5%. So versatility is just extra damage. So Wasteland Propriety basically just says you do 6% more damage all the time. That's what this says. That's why it's so strong. 6% more damage is amazing. It's really good. So that's the setup you're going to want to run. You need the Chain Harvest conduit and you need the call to flame and then you can pick here guys pick whichever one you want if you want the earthquake one put it in there or if you want to go wasteland put it in there too i think only for skybreakers is, is where uh, the earthquake one works really well so let's look at storm elemental with venthyr instead of night fey okay everybody following we're still storm elemental let's see if we can get permanent uptime on our ellie um we're still going to take earth and rage because i think it's possible to do it we just have to respect the procs that we're getting on Lava Burst. The reason that this is going to work better than Night Fey is because we're going to spread Flame Shocks, and our Flame Shock crits is what reduces the cooldown of Storm Alley. This is why this is going to work. Night Fey did not spread Flame Shocks. So, here we go. We're going to go Stormkeeper into Chain Harvest into Ellie. Make sense? Ready? Chain Harvest. Ch uh, Stormkeeper, Chain Harvest, Ellie. Then we go. 
He's juiced, so we're going to go with him. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Cast the occasional Lava Burst if you get it, of course. Because we do want to extend him a little bit. We need to we need to do that a little bit. Not as much as the Night Fae one, but we do need to extend him a little bit. Look at the Chain Harvest cooldown, by the way. It's already back. That's why Wasteland Propriety is so crazy. Chain Harvest is almost back. We need like one extra. We need to help it out a little bit. Chain Harvest is back. Let's, you must cast Chain Harvest on cooldown because it gives you all your Flame Shocks. And your Flame Shocks reduce the cooldown of your Ellie and make it permanent. This is what we're trying to do. You can see the cooldown of our Ellie is flying down right now. 38, 37, 34, 30, 29. You can see the cooldown going down there. Our Chain Lightning is getting really, really quick now. We lost all of our Flame Shocks again. Chain Lightning is getting really quick. And our Ellie is coming off cooldown. And we're going to press him. There. We just did around all the way around the corn. Our Ellie is, has been permanent so far. Back to Chain Harvest. And Stormkeeper. And we're going to go here. I just overloaded on Maelstrom so hard right there. So, okay, let's add a free Flame Shock over here just for extra ticking damage. Remember, our Flame Shocks are insane. <clears throat> and we've kept our Chain Lightning buff. We've kept it. Look at how fast it is. You can just spam it now. Now, you don't want to get greedy. You do need to weave in your... Uh, flame shocks and your lava bursts or else you will lose your elemental so don't get super greedy we got a theatar proc our mastery right now is 64 percent which gives chain lightning a 64 percent chance to overload which is disgusting that's why theatar is really good okay let's cheat a little bit here get one more flame shock out remember the cap on flame shock is six targets we only have five targets here so that's okay we're not getting even as much benefit as we could be getting one more time around the horn for our lightning Ellie. Oh, we lost him. Oh, see? See, I lost my buff. Man, that was actually so close. So I got a little lazy there. Even with even with this build, you have to be paying attention and you have to weave in those lava bursts or else you're going to miss you're going to miss the opportunity to keep that permanent chain lightning buff. Look at our chain lightning buff. Look at how low it is. So sad. There's Wasteland Propriety up there, and our damage, of course, is hovering around 20k because it's very strong. It's just so strong. Let's uh, run away here. I'll show you. Let's unsummon him. Dismiss him. So it's 19 and a half, maybe 20k sustained AoE damage. Over how long? That was a two, and a two minutes and 40 seconds. That's a long time, right? So here's the damage breakdown. Our Storm Elemental did 9% plus 6%. Almost, he's doing almost 50. He's doing 15% of our damage. That's really good. Our chain landing overload is way up there because of our mastery procs that we're getting from Theatar, of course. Earthquake's just going to be huge because we're getting tons of AOE casts on Earthquake. And then Chain Harvest comes in here, right? We got to cast Chain Harvest uh, four times there, which is really good. That's about every 45 seconds, maybe. So, <clears throat> this. Uh, the flame shock damage, of course, again, this is like just free damage. You're getting this free flame shock damage from Chain Harvest. 6.5%. 6.5% more damage just because you have Chain Harvest versus the Fate Transfusion, which Fate Transfusion does a great amount of damage on its own. But um, you can just see that this is better, and we have permanent Storm Ellie. I did have to work for it a little bit, and you always have to work for it a little bit. You can't just get lazy and keep casting chain lane and get greedy. That's that's you getting really greedy. You can't do that. So you have to basically like supplement every two or three chain landing casts with a lava surge, lava burst proc. Get those in there to extend the duration of Storm Alley just enough so you can get all the way around the horn and you can cast him again. Okay? That's what you want to do. That's what that looks like. And I think it works really, really well with Venthyr. So you can have permanent uptime on Storm Alley. Now, what if we don't do that? What if instead we go Fire Ellie? And I really, really like this build a little bit better, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> Storm Elemental's um, main purpose is giving you an active buff to Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolt, reducing the cast time. Fire Elemental's main thing is that it gives you passive damage. Not active damage, passive damage, which is amazing. It gives you double duration flame shocks. Flame shocks still damage 25% quicker. And with Skybreakers, they all have 50% crit. This is the this is the premier flame shock build if you're gonna go fire elemental, and I'll show you how it works right now. Okay. This is amazing. It does so much passive damage. 
you're going to see Flame Shock not doing 6% of our damage. Flame Shock's going to do like 20% of our damage here. And it's all free and it's all passive. And because the Flame Shock lasts so long, we're going to get probably double the number of Chain Harvest casts that we had on the other build. Okay? So pay attention to Chain Harvest and pay attention to the Flame Shock damage. You need to start this a little bit different. You start with Stormkeeper like normal, and then you go into Fire Elemental first before you press Chain Harvest. Because the Fire Elemental will buff newly applied Flame Shocks. You need to apply the Flame Shocks after the Fire Elemental comes in. Storm Elemental, Fire Ellie, Chain Harvest. Oh, I cast Healing Surge. This is really bad. Bad start. Here we go. It's okay. It's okay. We recover. See, our damage out of the gates is pretty good. Look at the damage coming from our um, Flame Shocks here. Chain Harvest is back already. We're going to press it. And we get free refresh on our Flame Shocks. Look at our Ellie cooldown. I haven't even... I don't need to weave in any Lava Bursts. Because the um, uh, Flame Shocks are doing all the work for me. Sorry, I'm losing my brain here. The Flame Shocks did all the work for me. I can press my, my Elemental again. Now he's permanent. He's already permanent. Chain Harvest is back again. Already permanent Ellie. I don't even have to weave in the flame shocks, a uh, flame lava uh, uh, burst if I don't want to. <laughs> There's too many things here. Look at the flame shock damage. That's what I'm talking about. Almost 15% of our damage, right? We're getting around to liquid magma totem again. We're going to go stormkeeper into liquid magma totem, which I think is very strong. Into chain harvest. Chain harvest is back. Look at that. There's tons of like burst options here with the AoE. You have Stormkeeper on a one-minute cooldown and Liquid Magma Totem on a one-minute cooldown. And they both do really great burst AoE. <clears throat> Liquid Magma Totem is actually uncapped AoE, in case you didn't know that. Here comes Chain Harvest again. Here we go. I'll cast it again. Again, we don't get any speed. We're not getting any faster Chain Lightnings, of course. But we're trading. You're trading the fast Chain Lightning casts for the passive damage from flame shocks that's the trade that you're getting and the massive cooldown reduction on chain harvest and the automatically um permanent uptime on your ellie you're sort of just trading these things back and forth it's not that one is necessarily better than the other it's just that it's a trade so what i what i think is really cool about this is that you can have permanent storm ellie like for the entire dungeon. I'm dead. I'm totally serious, guys. I think that the Storm Elemental build is going to fall apart a lot more often than you think it might. Like, this is th these are like ideal circumstances right here, right? I'm standing in front of a five target dummies. There's no. I'm under no duress, so this is very easy. There's and so like, my point here is simply to say that the Storm Elemental build is going to be much much harder to maintain a permanent Ellie. Like, it's actually going to be very hard to do that in a real mythic plus setting this is not hard to do having permanent fire ellie is not going to be hard to do at all i think it's going to be very possible actually so this is it guys this is the rotation it's very simple it's nothing hard about it at all you're just chain landing into earthquake when your chain harvest comes off cooldown every like 20 seconds you're going to cast it that's the bottom line <clears throat> when magma totem comes back you're going to cast it with your stormkeeper those two always go together. Here comes Stormkeeper. Big Chain Lightning. Earthquake. Magma Totem. Oh. I just did Door of Shadows there for no reason. Into a Chain Harvest. This is your AoE now. So your AoE comes from big Chain Harvests. Your Earthquakes, obviously. Liquid Magma Totem. Stormkeeper, Chain Lightnings. Earthquake, Liquid Magma Totem, Chain Harvest. Tons of AoE tools here. Really, really good. So I know that people are like going to talk about well the aoe damage from the uh storm elemental is just so much better than the fire elemental it's like fine but i get i have other tools then i'm getting like all the all these extra chain harvests i'm fitting in here that's that's the trade that you're getting and you get a whole different ability liquid magma totem or master the elements which is going to make earthquake do way more damage right that's the trade that you're getting you got to remember that you're trading stuff it's not just that one is better than the other you always get to trade so there you go that's the damage let's run away and see how many more times we cast um, Chain Harvest. It's an important metric to look at there. So, Chain Harvest was cast 11 times. On this one, we cast it four times. <laughs> this was 2 minutes and 40 seconds. This fight was... Oh, 
my flame shocks are still going. This was four minutes long. So let's cut this in half and say it was seven times. Oh my God, flame shock, please stop. It's about six or seven times versus four times. So it actually, over the course of time, it's going to be like double. It's going to be more than double, right? Like this was a four minute fight versus a two minute and 40 second fight, right? So I would say that on average, it was something like you're getting um, like eight. You're probably getting double. It's about four chain harvest versus eight. Honestly, it, it's about double. And it's because the uh, fire elemental is keeping your flame shocks out twice, you know, twice as long, right? They're lasting twice as long. So <clears throat> this build is really simple, really compact. You can run liquid magma or master the elements. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to worry about keeping up storm elemental. I think that. I know my brain's melting. It's so bad. I think that the easier that you make a build in Mythic Plus, especially the better you're, the better time you're gonna have. We always try to get these like newfangled ideas, like, well, here's this crazy cool storm elemental build. You can have permanent storm elemental with with uh, storm elemental with Venthyr. Absolutely, you can, but it's hard to pull off. It's like right on the line of being possible. All the stars have to kind of align for you. It has to line up really perfectly. You don't have to kick anything. You're not required to do anything extra. You're not required to, like, get out of a mechanic. You're not getting stunned by an enemy. You're not getting, I don't know, CC'd in any sort of way. Like, everything is lining up perfectly. And that doesn't, it's not really realistic in Mythic Plus. The margin for error is, like, zero. Whereas the Fire Elemental build, it's just so easy to pull off. It's passive damage. It's always going to be going out there. I think overall, over the course of a real Mythic Plus dungeon, the Fire build will do a lot more damage because it allows you to relax. It allows you to kick stuff. It allows you to put your cap totem down and just get into the groove of doing all the other Mythic Plus stuff while continuing to tick those flame shocks. 50% crit, double duration, boom, boom, boom. Free chain harvest coming back. Like All your damage is wrapped up in these passive... Obviously, Chain Harvest is active, but it's just one button. You press it, and boom, it does a bunch of damage for you. Versus having to maintain a Chain Lightning uptime with your Storm Elemental over and over and over again. Trying to keep that going is going to be very difficult in Mythic Plus. Pack to pack to pack. I don't think you're going to have sort of a permanent Storm Ellie in the same way. So <clears throat> those are the, that's the breakdown, guys, of Skybreakers. This is the first one I want to look at for Elemental Shaman. I think it's the funnest, like the absolute funnest build moving into 9.2. There's a whole bunch of options here for you. I think it completely unlocks the Fire Elemental build, which is amazing and awesome. And like, I love that we get to play with Fire Elemental again and that it's completely viable. And I think that it just is a lot of fun to play in a dungeon as well. Now, that being said, you can go Storm Elemental as Venthyr or you can go Storm Elemental as Night Fae. And do that different sort of pack to pack to pack where you have a like a storm elemental on one pack and then you have to wait for one minute and the storm elemental on the next pack and then you wait for one minute that kind of play style that's perfectly fine once again that's very viable as well and you get big crits from the night fey one as well so the choice is up to you guys but if i was running elemental shaman in 9.2 i would run this build i would go skybreakers plus fire elemental venthyr skybreakers with fire elemental that's what i would do because i just feel like it utilizes the tier set bonus really well. Um, it it, it the, it's all about the flame shot crits. It's passive damage, which is just free, and you don't have to like worry about maintaining a chain landing cast time buff. Um, you don't have to worry about any of that. You just go with uh, fire elemental, and you go with your big flame shocks, and you just burn everything to the ground. So that's that would be the build that I would run. This is the way I would set it up, and um, yeah, the soul bond you would take a theotar. That's it, guys. So. <clears throat> That's Skybreakers for Elemental Shaman in a nutshell. And um, I'm going to continue on with the Elemental builds. We're going to look at Wind Speakers for um, Single Target. We're going to look at Echoes of the Great Sundering for AoE. And we're also going to take a pit stop on Deeply Rooted Elements. Deeply Rooted Elements, I think, is the secret tech, guys. It's going to be really good. So stay tuned for those builds coming in the next couple of days. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the support, the subscriptions, and... Um, the likes and the comments below. I love all the conversations we're having. We got to like 610 subscribers today or something. So let's keep that going. If you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it. But until the next one, guys, I'll see you later.